Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. I am really pleased with this picture. Look, it's got it's got John in it, it's got Nilrim, and it's even got Seymour. Everyone's there, having a great time. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to do. It was pretty crazy last night, wasn't it? Now that Seven John's months. a zombie, when is he gonna start eating flesh? Uh, yeah, I just don't know what to do. I know, I, I find it... I know Neil said my personality's not necessarily impacted. But, uh... I don't think the John from before can survive what's happened. I just don't think it's possible. Um, I already spoke to Neil about the potential of just going full fighter from now on. Um, yeah, he said that's fine, so I could do that. But I'm hoping maybe to use this opportunity to do something a bit more interesting. I do feel like the John that I had is ruined a little bit, yeah. I don't think I can be the same character. Just because I didn't mind him being shit in combat because he was this sort of force of personality. Charismatic, charming, you know, interesting to roleplay. But I just don't see how... I don't see how that same character can exist now. I mean, I mean not only... It's not just sex, it's drinking as well. It's just, it's almost anything, you know. It's almost anything that that kind of person like him would live for. The only Todd I miss and Nick becomes a Lutho Harkon. I don't know what that is, but yeah, I know, I'm lucky. Can you still drown? I don't know, well, that's what I was trying to test by shoving my head in the water. By the way, for those of you thinking about that, I'm pretty certain that this is gonna be a holy, a lake of holy water, which is why it was burning us. I don't think it's like all fresh water. But it could just be that it's running water and we're like vampires. Can we do the monastery fight? I think so, yeah. Did you die? Uh, my head got bitten off by a troll. And then Rohi resurrects me. If you ask to switch to a thief necromancer, then that might help keep you the face of the party. Necromancers have vampiric traits as their power grows in Neil's world, so you can kind of leave zombie form and become more charismatic again. Well, 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 Zach. That is a good idea. You know, in a lot of ways, if you think about it, John's character was about using charisma to command others. So he is weak himself. But he is powerful because he has command over others. Now, isn't that isn't there a sort of a twisted parallel with that to a necromancer? It was so a lucky vessel, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like from the the fact that I got uh, I got crit. Sorry, no, that it hit me, and then I failed my block, and then it did thirteen damage, and then the crit before it left me on two. It was just. It was very unfortunate. How sad are you about Nilrim? Wait, what do you mean about? Oh, about Seymour. Yeah, I know. It's pretty sad, isn't it? In a world where John becomes a necromancer, maybe we can like murder Seymour and turn him into a zombie monkey. How cool would that be? Fucking troller, I know, mate. As soon as I saw the little trolls, I was thinking, oh, this is fucked. And then we went like multiple rounds only fighting the little ones and they were really tough to kill. So I was thinking, okay, there's probably not the big trolleroo here. This is probably just like a signal that it's around. So I go check me trying to be the hero going off chasing after Starbuck to save him. Uh yeah, and then I I should have just I was trying to be the hero chasing Starbuck, and then I was trying to be the hero again by using the poison on the on the trolleroo. Would he been of Winter's replacement candidate? I don't think so. They were kind of the same person in a lot of ways, so I just think it would have been a bit weird. <laughs> Archie stops rolling 20s for three rounds and we get stumped. Yeah, that's true. I feel bad for Starbuck too. Yeah, I liked him. That's why I was trying to say them. I thought he was a, an interesting an interesting character to have in the game. Having crossed the other side and back, Captain Winters comes back a changed man. While he would still die at minus 10, now Winters won't go down upon reaching zero and keep fighting even with grievous wounds that would put anyone else down. Lacking blood, the undead captain cannot bleed out either. On the flip side, he only heals a single point a day and no healing can accelerate the process until he reaches one hit point. Would be cool. I still think that's a pretty big nerf, though. Uh, the not healing. Do you have any new abilities? Not so far, but I'm maybe going to see what I can get out of Neil. It's very rare you get to announce a brutal death for a character in 2nd edition D&D, or in any version of D&D, because there's always a chance the character can come back to life, right? Um, so you can't have heads getting bitten off. But the one time you can do it is when you get someone below minus 10 in a single attack, so... I'm not surprised that Neil took the opportunity to give him a gruesome death. Do you have a thought on how you'll change your roleplay with this lack of sensation? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I think there's just a few ways it can go. Like, so many people have already sort of touched on the things I was thinking about. Like, I think becoming depressed 
and ultimately losing interest in life and living. I I could absolutely see that. I mean, I was half considering just uh, just falling off the boat into the water at the end of last session. Because I genuinely think that someone like John would would be, you know, ultimately sort of depressed and just thinking life's not worth living like this. It's just horrendous. I think the main reason not to is the fact that he knows that Archie gave up so much to bring him back and he doesn't want that to be in vain. But it's like, you know, it's like hell on earth almost for him. Because it's one thing to not have the feeling, but to have a fucking gash around your neck where your head's been literally sewn back on is, is horrendous. Any other way to fight with this character? Bow not anymore with the minus one dex. I mean, bow could still be okay. I've still got plus one to hit with a bow. Well, no, it's actually, a, it's a flat. Um, no, yeah, no, it's... I get minus one to hit from what I would have got, but I've still got a plus one from Dex, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, do you think John will turn to seeing help from Flumbra Clarice to save his soul? I think it's too late for that, mate. I really do. Um, would I prefer him dead? Depends if I can think of a cool way to take it, but I would have... I think I'd have rather they just let me die, yeah. But we can... We can make this work in cool and interesting ways. So I'm going to work with Neil to try and come up with a good way to take the character. Yeah, I was thinking about that vessel, about making a deal with Rohi and killing himself to restore Sail and Archie, but I'm not sure that's going to be possible, but maybe. Does he want vengeance? Mm, that's a good point. I don't think you'd be seeing it like that right now. But, um... Maybe in the future, I suppose. Like, in a lot of ways now, John's kind of useless to the party. You know what I mean? Like, he, he had a use before as the front man, as the charismatic captain, the face of the the face of our operation. But he clearly can't do that anymore. So, like, wh what is his use to the party? He's got no use, right? He's just dead weight, essentially. <laughs> Literally. So, I don't see anyone... I don't see anyone... It doesn't feel realistic to me that, like, Nilrum would, and, and Sale and that would continue to follow John's leadership at this point. You could play in the way where John is convinced the Fountain of Youth will restore him, so now his drive is to find it ASAP or one of them. I could, yeah. But I... I, I don't... I feel like the hope, the hope of that is so small and the trauma of what he's been through and the existence he's living is so great that I'm not sure that tiny bit of hope would be enough to spare him on. Maybe if he was William it would, but I don't know if it would be for John. Do you think this is the start of a new darker chapter of the campaign? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Unless unless something like John letting him sacrificing himself to restore Archie and Sale as possible. But it might not be. What if the Fountain of Youth could restore you? I mean, I just don't think it would, but even if it could, like... So what? That's like out-of-game knowledge, right? If it was possible, John wouldn't know that. He doesn't know it's real. Clara Caponus. I think it's too late for John to be anything other than... indebted to Row here. You've conquered death, something no one has done in 1500 years. True. It is true, yeah. That's why I kind of want to make the most of it, you know. I think it's a it's a good opportunity, and I... Here's my pitch to Neil, sort of, I guess, about the Necromancer thing. Like, if anyone can be trusted to play the Necromancer in a group and not abuse it, I think it's me. I think Neil can trust me to make that work. Because um, I think it could get easily out of hand and could end up ruining the campaign, but I feel like I can be trusted not to do that. The only way it's depressing is if my character's got worse at fighting and I've lost the ability to be the charismatic leader, which is the main bit of the character. Like, I feel like you take that away, there is not much to the character anymore. And no real reason for the party to let him be in charge. I'm curious if you'd have known this was what awaited Malachi upon resing, would you have rather he stayed dead? Uh, in hindsight, no. At the time, I would have still done it. I think... Listen, right, Hardcore Heroes ended anyway. I would have preferred an ending <laughs> where Malachi comes back and he's evil and a zombie and he kills Van 
and becomes the like arch villain of Arcadia. I think that would have been an epic. I mean, we've not seen Van since anyway. I just think that would have been a cooler ending. But um, I understand why Sean didn't go for it. But I think that's probably what would have happened. I do think it would have been similar. Yeah, I don't think Malachi would care that much about being undead. Yeah, that's it. It's just a fast track to being a lich at that point. Could have been cool. Alas, Van did the right thing though. Van's smart enough to know that that was what was going to happen. And knowing that... You know, that wasn't good. Sean would have needed to give up his guard. Yeah, but at the, at the time, he was kind of prone to... He was primed for it, because the thing with Chiefs was so annoying. <laughs> what if John's depression leads to anger and resentment towards Sean Archie? Well, I don't know if you were paying attention. I already showed a little bit of that at the end of last episode. I think that's a... Uh, I think that's a real, a real thing that he would feel. And envy towards the rest of the living crew. His soft side that the party needed will definitely change the campaign direction. Yeah, I think that's the thing. John was, he wasn't a good guy, but he was the, he was the heart of the party for sure. Neil has said earlier that he wants people to own their character's death though. Uh, this development of the character, others decided after your character died, so I think Neil will pass it, yes. Hmm, okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's quite wise that, IS-92. Next time you ransom a kid, you've got to pull this shit. <laughs> you could totally quote lines from the movie as John. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I might have to watch the movie. To get some inspiration. It's basically the same character, right? Quite funny. <laughs> you best start believing in the grim darkness of the far future because you're in it. I know. Well, Eugene the Monk, the, the eyes were not described as purple. But pos possibly, yes. I think it's one of those things that it's a happy accident and Neil might be like, oh yeah, that's what I meant. Spectral Row is hit different now that three quarters of the party are undead. True. John will go crazy with no alcohol and no women. No alcohol, no women, no, like, like, I don't know, like, the joy of dancing, the camaraderie of, like, singing a song with with your friends. I can imagine that his, I mean, I'm not sure I can really do it, but I imagine his voice has changed. Like, if you literally can't even drink liquid because of the hole in your neck, I find it hard to imagine that your voice isn't, like, more raspy. It's funny how in Hardcore Heroes, the gods only learnt of Malchus because Van communicated with Chiefs. They are portrayed as so much more omniscient now. Yeah. Which do you think would be best for John? Necromancer fighter, necromancer thief, or strip? Well, he's already a fighter thief, so I think it would be he stops leveling in fighter thief and starts leveling in necromancer from here. Hey, Moot. Look at Emrim, dog. He won on the spinner, and he thought about it a lot. No. And he's going to make it his dog. Emrim, dog. MRM dog. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, I'm adding a dog emote. What's up? I'm <laughs> alright, yeah. Are you like, are you, seem, you sound like you've not slept. No, I've slept a bit. You've slept I'm, a bit, I'm okay. Tired right now, yeah. Alright, uh, are you ready to hear a battle plan for dealing with Scoria? Yeah, I think, I'm on, I think you're on the wrong mic though for me. Oh, really? Okay. It sounds like you're on like a webcam. Oh, yeah, I am. I know. Should be better now? Yeah, perfect. I wanted um, to say that Yesterday's episode of Tied to Death, I think, was one of my most, it's one of my favorite episodes. I think that I've ever oh, really? played. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. What what about it? Did you like so much? <laughs> I really like when Neil, I feel like, bends the rules in a cool way, where he's not like fucking himself over, if that makes sense. Mm. So I think the resurrection stuff isn't something that he probably just was like, oh, let me resurrect them because I feel bad for killing Nick's character. I think it was more something like. This is something that Rohi can actually do, so let yeah. me do the power. I so, think with, yeah, I with everything, cool. I think Neil is ultimately guided by his own like internal uh, logic in the world. And actually, yeah. if the reason why resurrection is not allowed is because the gods don't allow it, then something that has the power of the gods but isn't bound by isn't their bounded. rules, then yeah. technically it should work. I was thinking like this is pretty far fetched, but like maybe rohi was the god who could like resurrect and they had like a big battle and he like was thought to be dead or whatever like maybe and then he's can still do it kind of but i'm not sure maybe that's how the winter it sounded like axed. yeah he keeps saying that they're a meme but now i don't know <laughs> i don't know either mate he's got it as a thing in his chat i think it's, it's legit all right he typed um, on yeah yeah go ahead i'm gonna share my screen is that the way to do this um yeah that'll work yeah um Okay. It's kind of sad. 
You're gonna be showing on your stream too, right? I can check it. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I can just do it on my stream if you want. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me know when you can, uh, when you've got it all set up. It planned to destroy Scoria. Did you make this or did someone make this? I made this. Okay, somebody came up with a battle plan, but I converted it into this glorious Into a thing nice got little presentation. Yeah, okay, it's okay. it yeah. took me longer than I'd like to admit. Um, <laughs> okay, what I will say is that, number one, I don't think that this is a foolproof plan at all. What I think it okay. is, is a way to... I think it's a good plan, but also that can structure the, the attack on Scoria in a cool way that Neil can work it into a narrative where... You know, first we do this stage, then there's this other stage with these other characters doing this other thing, and it can become like a whole, a whole thing. And it rather than us just saying we all march as one to our lair and fight her, this kind of yeah. gives it different stages and makes it a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna skip the executive summary. I'm gonna go straight to the map. Okay. okay so you're gonna look at your key here. In your blues, you've got the Dracus army, which we're gonna be splitting into two parts. So you've got your your army group one and your army group two. And in gold, okay. you've got Shine. Now, in green here, we've got the elves. Now, it, it might be that the elves don't actually help us, in which case their parts won't happen, but I think the plan can still work without them. But I was saying that you're going to have, like, a main elf force of maybe, like, I don't know how many guys, a small group of normal dudes, and then, like, the elite guys who are separate. Then we've got the Wayfarers in purple, but this isn't just the Wayfarers. It's going to be, like, the Wayfarers plus some of our other high-level... Uh, companions that adventure with us. Yeah? And that then, seems good. And then in red, you've got the Megaris. Okay, so this is how it's going to go down. So, the first thing to do, the Rathwood, which is here, just to the west of Longcast, the Wayfarers will okay. slow teleport to Rathwood, and then, under the cover of night, attack Bridgelight, and capture the town, and capture the bridge. Do you think that the Wayfarers <clears throat> can do this, though? I think a group of like say 10 level 6 to level 7 characters with good magic gear I think okay. can capture a shitty town yeah were we we were near that in that one character game you know what I'm talking about in uh, Gnome Summon Catacombs in Odam yeah yeah was that bridge light was that bridge it. light we were in I by god I think that it was uh might have been yeah because remember we destroyed the 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 boat or whatever the the bridge yeah it might have been okay well i would say though that uh -huh. level six to level seven in 2e is like, it's way better than it's higher yeah. than level six to seven in 5e relative okay. to the guards and stuff um for example like that sergeant guy that killed us in odam he was probably like level six or level seven but i don't think he would be level six or seven in 2e no he'd probably be like level five yeah. right Anyway, but the Wayfarers will be getting help. So, first part now. So, Army Group 2, Shine, and the Brothers are going to march up the Emerald Run towards Evermond and easily capture that town there. Whilst the other half of the army will march with them, but divert to the right of the river and go to Bridgelight with the Wayfarers. Can you move your camera to, like, the bottom right of the screen? Uh, if possible. It is possible, yeah. Okay. It's a little hard for her to see the... The map. Um, tell you what, I'm just gonna just for the presentation. Too. All right. So this is where we stand right now. We've got Shine on one half of the army and us in Evermond, and then we've got the other half of the army and the Wayfarers in Bridgelight. This is the most dangerous point when our forces. So the real Megari, Shine, and the second army are going to be in Evermond. Yeah. And then the Wayfarers and the second or the first army are going to be in Bridgelight. Yes. Yeah. This that. is the most dangerous point because this is when we're the furthest apart. So, so if my... Scoria attacks right now, yeah. one of the armies, if she attacked the right army, they would get demolished. Well, I'm thinking, do we still have the candle? You would be able to see Scoria go into Bridgelight and we could use the candle to get yeah. ourselves... To teleport there? Immediately to fight her. Maybe. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. But anyway, from here then, let's look, cast your eyes to the north to Ildreth, where mm -hmm. the Elven Kingdoms are. So their main force are going to come from the north and capture Slagmire. Slagmire. Yeah. yeah, okay, right. Quick question. Yep. 
can you make a permanent illusion on a pebble and the permanent illusion would bring out um like a picture of a mcgarry brother yeah i think so Cause, yeah because then you could make three permanent illusions on like pebbles and then people could carry them around mm. in uh in the other army so if they looked through like a spyglass or whatever or, you know the thing they would be able to see that there are mcgarry people walking around there or at least stationed there I could do that, but I'm not sure it would, it would I think we'd just be stationary or just kind of like kicking our feet, sharpening our weapons yeah, or something. You know, it wouldn't be as over a long period it might real. be a little bit yeah. uh, unbelievable. But potentially, yeah. That's I think sowing uh, misinformation mm -hmm. here about our location is kind of key. Yep. Okay, so anyway, okay. that's phase that's phase one. And from a meta point of view, there's obviously the main story of us and Shine taking Evermond. But the Wayfarer is attacking Bridgelight. That could be like a one shot done with people, other people from the community, or you know, like that could be a whole separate yep. episode that doesn't. Even it would be like uh, that one thing that you guys like, did, yeah. Like the that portal, cool. Demons Run, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Even the Elves as well. But anyway, from there, okay. So then, Us, Shine, and the main army go to High Meadow next and capture that, and then from there we go to Sun Lake, which is just to the southeast and bring in the cleric to make a portal to bring in loads of supplies and then that will become like a resupply base in sun lake how so many we, days are we planning on this taking like i mean i think campaign? like one or two days i think okay um so it would be pretty quick yeah so after the resupply the army group then goes to the front of scoria's lair with shine and what we've done is at the base we've used seeming to mm -hmm. disguise us as elves and to disguise some other people as us. So then the fake versions of us go with Shine and they are the same group that we've been with the whole time. They then yep. march to the front of the lair whilst the second army group and the Wayfarers go to Crownhold and just siege it. I don't think they can take it, but I think that they can sort of siege it and just act as like a buffer to stop reinforcements like attacking us in the back outside the lair. Got it. Seems good. And Matava yeah. is... Well, hopefully out of the war at this point, right? Okay. Just making sure. Uh, and then the elves are going to march down through this forest here, clearing out monsters and meet at the front as well. Now, so this is what I was saying about the elves not being that important. Like, this green line could yeah. just not be here and it would probably be fine. It would be probably okay. Yeah. But they can come in. So it looks now like we're setting up a frontal assault on the lair. Mm -hmm. Whilst the fake Megari brothers go to meet the rest of the elves in Vale, who will attack over the water and we will sneak through that forest into Vale. And then from there, attack through the back of the lair with Shine basically coming through the front and sandwiching Scoria between us. That's the plan. Seems good. Yeah. Yeah, seems good. And then I've got a bit more information in here about what each group would be doing and different groups of people that could help, which, uh, you know, we don't have to go through. But that's what I was thinking for a plan. Um, like I said, I don't think it's foolproof, and I think there's loads of places where it could... Uh, it could go, go wrong. wrong but no that's like better than just saying we march the whole army in one direction forward yeah so i'll probably run it past neil and destiny at some point i guess yeah no i'm on board with that we've got a bit of time there before that'll stop it right yeah it sounds like we're gonna go get like phoenix feathers or whatever we're gonna go yeah. on like a adventure i know that you thought that was maybe like not that interesting but i do no, think... i don't mind the adventure at all yeah i think it's a good opportunity for neil to let us do something fun where yeah. he's kind of got free reign to make it however he wants, and yeah, I don't, like I don't mind that army adventure. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, you know, that was it. I'm glad uh, you enjoyed the presentation. Yeah, it was very good. What are you? Uh, what How are long you did doing? it take you? Oh, uh, like playing person like, battle around right now. Like a stream, so like I don't know, three hours. Huh. It was more the animating of the arrows that took a long time. They yeah. did look good, and they helped out. They did look good, mate. I know, yeah. You put a lot of work and it shows. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, hopefully we can get Scoria done within, I don't know, six to eight episodes. It'd be cool. Yeah, I think so. It seems like that'll be fine. I think six to eight is generous, actually. I think it might It be would less. just be really shit if we got there and I guess eventually like just did die to her in like a really shitty way. It would, it would, it <laughs> would just... feel shit if we died because we'd not <laughs> spent the time to do it right. Yeah. It would. That would feel shit. It would. I, I don't mind dying if I feel like we've given it our best go. And we lose. I, I really, I fine. know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a glass cannon, like a three round thing, which sucks. I wish that D and D combat could be more fleshed out. Um, well, I have to say, I was playing in a one shot in Five E the other day, 
and I was struck by like you know the combat it maybe is better really just, just as like a standalone just thing? A, a fighting simulator there's just more yeah. I think it, it is just think things have more health and take longer to die yeah so I do think there's Second edition has a lot of like just crazy one shot mechanics from monsters like I, the dragon fires breath weapon and then they also die super quick though so yeah but I think that I, for me that the way the second edition where the classes are differentiated and the way it's just got better realism that outweighs it, nice. it for me yeah that's my favorite part of second edition is the um, it feels like the classes are unique Whereas yeah. in 5th edition, for me, it felt like every class does the same thing. Absolutely. It's just like, make an attack with your chosen statistic, like whether it's charisma, yeah. whether it's strength, whether it's dex. And know. no matter the class you play, you can find like, a way to, you know, be like a DPS class or like a yeah. fucking healer. You just have a... Yeah, you're right. And it's just like a fighter shouldn't be able to do all the crazy shit that they can do in 5th edition. It's in 5th edition, a, a fighter a can literally take like a like 10 minutes to roll those fucking dice yeah yeah it's, it's silly. absolutely insane and like i think that i remember when in gnome stones and catacombs your pirate character soloed a hill giant oh a giant yeah and you were like level five and i was just thinking that like god my in second edition that would never absolutely happen yeah you'd be crushed within like one <laughs> round you'd just be dead <laughs> you'd have no chance at all yeah that was pretty crazy so how long have you got left on your uh your scamathon um, it says 57 hours, but that would be if no one did anything until the end. All right, so you're, which, gonna be, you're going for a while. I'm going to be here for a while, probably, <laughs> yeah. It it gets pretty crazy. The thing that I struggled with last time was it would get to like an hour, and then it would jump back up to like eight hours. Oh, and God. I eventually kind of just killed it on my own, but I'm pretty sure that that could happen for like a week, and I just need to be ready like mentally for that torture. So have you um, spent like every waking moment? streaming i would say pretty much um i go to the bathroom sometimes i go get food um i take a shower but like pretty much i would say every waking moment maybe an hour a day um not but yes yeah. like an hour sp like split over the day yeah probably an hour split over the day usually like 30 minutes in the morning um and then like 30 minutes later in the day I can L, dude. That's uh, it's intense. Well, sounds like it's working for you. A lot of fun, though. Yeah, Six, it's 1,600 fun. subs, it. and you said you got a lot of donations, so that's good. Yeah. I've been enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun, so I can't complain. You wouldn't want to do it, like, all the time, though. Or do Lying? it. Lying? Well, I, I sleep as well. Yeah. Like, it's not... Oh, well, obviously sleeping. I said waking. Yeah, obviously. Ones. Yeah, he said waking, chat. Use your ears. Use your goddamn ears. Um, what were you going to say? You wouldn't want to... Um, you wouldn't want to do it all the time, or do it like Neil, where you don't sleep in between. <laughs> Oh, absolutely not. I don't know how Neil does that. What a crazy that, fucker, yeah. That is cr that is crazy, yeah. Being able just not to sleep at all is nuts. So what do you think about what's happened to John in Tides of Death? Um, I think it's super cool, out of character. It, uh, I also hope that you lawyer yourself some buffs um, somehow. Yeah, well, I got... genuinely think that it would be okay to maybe get rid of the thief or rogue class and just maybe take half of it and put it into your fighter. I don't know. It seems... Um... I'm hoping for something maybe a little bit more dramatic. Uh, I, the, I'm trying to think of the best way to word my thoughts. I'm going to kind of write it down and yeah. send it to Neil. But uh, I think the problem is that John's like weak in combat and he always has been and that, that's fine. I was yeah. happy with that because he got power through the fact that he was able to control others and mm -hmm. he was this fun character to role play. He played this like leader role. He was like super charismatic, always sort of taking the lead in situations. Like, yeah, that's gone now. I mean, I know he said that my personality hasn't changed, but like I was saying to you in Discord chat, if before, you feel it's changed, then it's changed. Yeah, yeah I just don't think he can come back the same person. So, yeah. and also he can't really be the face of the party when he looks like a a zombie. So I feel like he probably can't technically be the face. Yeah. So I think that's like taking away his role, and if he's not useful in combat. And he's not um, this charismatic person manipulator. Then, really, what use does he have to the rest of the party? Yeah. yeah. So, this is a bit crazy out there, and I'm not saying that Neil's going to let it happen. But uh, so, John before was a weak fighter, a weak individual, but strong because of his command over others. And now he's touched the other side. You know, he's he's been dead. He's now a zombie. 
what if we just go full on Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean and he's just a zombie like pirate captain necromancer now I'm maybe not full on raising loads of undead but maybe just some of the mm-hmm. powers from the necromancer drain life maybe raise corpses from the ocean to fight to crawl up the sides of a ship or something like that in for a small period I'm could Barbosa and... do that? Well, he had an undead crew, didn't he? He had an undead crew because his undead his crew touched like the gold. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, oh, right, okay. It no, wasn't like a, he images. made it. Yeah, fine, fine. it wasn't like he made it. It was more of a his oh his whole crew became undead because they touched some gold. Ah, they're all undead. Well, you know it's kind of similar. My crew's undead too, or at least two thirds of them. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna maybe try and argue something like that. Maybe switch my mm-hmm. thief thief class into necromancer and do it in some sort of nerfed way. I don't know. I'm gonna try and. Yeah, Neil, I've cause... always thought like a necromancer. I said it from the beginning. I kind of wanted Dilrim to be that. Yeah. A necromancer using uh, undead to like man the ships is super, super duper cool. It would yeah. make for an excellent pirate crew. Yeah. It is cool. I, I think it, the rules as they are now, they're too powerful. So it would get out of mm-hmm. hand. It needs to be some sort of nerfed version of it. And that would make sense because it's like Rohi doing it. So I think it would make sense if it's like only while you buy the sea. Or something yeah. like that. Or you know, like, did you, you could play? also nerf it yourself and just not, yeah, you know, not go the not, whole crazy. Yeah, way. that's what I yeah. was thinking. Uh, like you know, did you play Witcher Three? I think I remember you telling me you didn't like it. Played a little, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's like an enemy in that called Drowners, which is like when people have mm-hmm. drowned in the water. Whenever you go near the water, you get attacked by these sort of like drowned, dead zombie things. But they they mm-hmm. can't follow you past the you know the edge of the water. So maybe John, if he was a necromancer, is raised dead would be kind of short lived and limited to yeah being by the sea like by the sea stuff yeah that could be cool um someone said asked him to play bard but the necromancer spells you could replace the healing with necro spells <laughs> wait just be a, bar, a bard necromancer yeah i mean i don't uh, know how to work i don't know yeah i'm not sure i don't understand why bards get magic that to me it seems really dumb but yeah i don't know why um bards get magic either bards as a class just seem odd they're kind of like just the jack of all trades yeah it's just odd but in base rules, rogues can kind of use magic items intended for wizards and use scrolls kind of just by chancing their way through it. So I think maybe bards are doing yeah. a similar thing. Hmm. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah, it seems like we just need to stop having people play rogue. It seems really dog shit. <laughs> yeah. It might be good for like a solo campaign. Yeah, like, probably uh, is for the assassin solo campaign. campaign. Well, I'm not even but, a rogue. I mean, I was a fighter rogue, and I'm still useless. And it's still useless. Yeah. Yeah. Like so I'm bad. Full fighter rogue. cleric was really good, though. Yeah, fighter cleric. And... I was wondering if you could get cleric instead. I don't know if you'd be interested in that. Probably not, because nah, already the d- cleric. Yeah, right? I don't think yeah. so. I don't think it does too much. Um, no. Yeah. What was I gonna say? Fighter wizard was not that powerful, but actually, now that Imric's high level, I think that it it is really powerful because now Good that I've HP. got. Yeah, the HP, and now that I've got loads of spell slots, the fact that I was kind of underleveled and not able to, like, specialize mm-hmm. was kind of limited in my spell slots, but now that that's kind of overcome by just the fact that I'm so high level, yeah. the extra HP and being able to use, like, a bow at, um, like, being able to fly and use the bow is, like, really strong. I think it's worked out in the long term, but I do think Fighter Cleric was the best combo. I think Fighter Cleric was the best, weirdly enough. I was thinking it was going to be Fighter Wizard, but I... I think you might have just been better off. I think the the true best, if we wanted to have the best group, it should have been fighter cleric, fighter, and wizard. Yeah. And then I think you could have just absolutely wrecked. You could have give uh, Steven Fly, he could have had a bow, and he could have absolutely killed it too. But it worked yeah. out well, like, honestly. No, it's worked out well. I and mean, we've had so much gear that we've been able to make it work. We're yeah, fighter insanely cleric seems powerful. Too good. Yeah, it is. Cleric, I already think clerics and Tui are really strong. The fact that they get, the fact that they can wear heavy armor and they get any spells at all is just really good. Yeah, it's incredibly good. Because like, and then most of their spells are pretty useful. Buff I mean, spells, so yeah, you can do them beforehand. The cleric falls off in spells in the later levels, but in like the first sort of seven to nine levels, the cleric spells are all really strong, and they're a decent fighter as well. Obviously, like after you get high enough level, their base attack falls behind the fighter so much mm-hmm. that it starts to become a problem. So, like, you know, a level 10 cleric's got, like, a plus 4 to hit, whereas a level 10 fighter's got, like, a plus 9. That's a big difference. Yeah. But at level 5, it's, like, plus 4 versus 
Plus two, it's not plus that three. big a difference. Plus two or three, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Cleric spells absolutely do fall off. I was looking at some of the later wizard spells, and once li wi once wizards get like <clears throat> eight or ninth level spells, they are just crazy. They're oh, yeah. insanity. Whereas even like a seventh level cleric spell, they're not that insane. They're mainly just okay, except for like gate. Gate seems really cool. And I probably am going to cast that before the campaign's over because I just need to know what it does. Even um, if it's in like the epilogue. Well, I, mean, I was thinking, thing. depending on what we need to kill for the fire potion, fire scroll, you could have like yeah. gate gated in something that we just need to kill. And then it could be like I a super quick could, encounter. Maybe, yeah. Like just gate in a phoenix, kill it, and quest done. You don't yeah. get to choose what comes through though, right? Oh yeah, I guess not. Well, it's, it, like, it's kind of like what you need and depending on your alignment, like it's something like that. We might be able to finesse it in some way by like, I don't know, like having part of the creature or having something that it really likes. Did like, we tell Neil? Like if this is a, if this is like a plan that we want to do? Well, I think he's probably planning an actual adventure for us, so. He might be, yeah. yeah. I think that could be cool though. I just really want to cast the spell. Like that's yeah. my whole thing behind it is like, I just genuinely want to cast that fucking spell. Yeah, definitely. So I'll either do it why. for that, or I'll do it like if we defeat Scoria, Anton goes to Solemn. He can probably cast it on his own at that point. He casts it and, you know, we'll see what we get. You could even um, um, cast it. The cleric will be coming at the base camp to use mm -hmm. the portal. So you could cast it there at that point in the sort of invasion plan. You know, it yeah. would be kind of cool if you could just summon something terrifying in a city and then leave. Just kind of leave I would probably there. have the gold dragon next to me. Her and I would cast it near each other because it depends on what's ne like what's near you and what's in your party of what you'll get. So if we have a gold mm. dragon, we should get something good. Oh, I genuinely. see what you mean. Yeah, we should get like yeah. an angel or something crazy. We should get like an angel or like another gold dragon. Um, Is it gated from any plane or is it a specific plane? I believe it's any plane. Let me look it up. So it could be from the dragon plane then. Uh, eight. Are there angels? Yeah, I don't know. Neil's world? I've never heard of them. No. Well, there's demons, though. Gator portal from its plane. Uh, the result of the connection is that the sought after being can step through the gator portal from its plane. So I guess it can go from any plane, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah Which you need, there's... You need uplift to cast this, right? Currently, I do. Yeah. Unless we level um, up one more time. I think unless we level up twice more until I can cast it alone. Oh, really? Okay. I think so. Yeah. So when I'm guessing we're going to get a level up when we kill the green dragon level 12 and then when we kill Scoria. I think both of those should definitely be like a level up. Oh, after killing Scoria. Yeah, for sure. After Absolutely. killing Scoria for sure. And then I think after killing the age class 12 green dragon, I think that we should get a level up there too. I agree. If we're, if we all are, we, are we still doing that? Kind of seemed like... I think we need to for the level up because we also get an extra hit every other turn, every other round um, on our fighter with uh, that level and it, and it gets me level 7 spells. And it'll get you level 7 spells. There's yes. like no way that we can not do that. Yeah, it's a massive, massive upgrade. Yeah, so how many it's it gets you... It's just too good. Well, does it get you two attacks round and three every other round? Yes. Yeah, that is... And then with haste, that's going to be... You know, oh, improved. Shit. Yeah. What is that? That's seven attacks around. No. Because I already have three attacks now, normally. So I'll have like three attacks and then four attacks every other round with so my be, offhand. It'd be five attacks around, wouldn't it? Because you'd go from two and a half. It'd be double. Yeah. You'd get five attacks around. That's, yeah, that's mad. Yeah. It's crazy. It's actually six attacks around because of your. Because of well, my offhand. Or is it seven? You get to attack with the offhand twice when you were hasted? I don't. I don't think so. No, yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't. Did. Yeah. Man, Hearthstone but. looks. <laughs> well, Hearthstone looks very different, but I'm... it's nice to see that that two three uh, like harvest golem thing is still. still yeah, there. this is a it's a different mode. It's called Hearthstone Battlegrounds. Uh, uh, it's, it's like an like auto, auto chess, chess kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy this mode a lot. I never really looked into auto chess. I don't really get it. It's a lot of fun just to be able to play like a super mindless game. So what happens now? Does that mean he wins? Um, I lost that round. I lost a little bit of HP, and now I get to go again. I have nine money or whatever that I can spend. Each Everything you buy costs three. If I want to get better stuff, it'll cost me seven um, 
for one turn, and then it'll go up, and the next turn I'll be able to get level four minions every every round. If that mm. makes sense. So when I refresh here, which costs one, um, now something that I couldn't get before, which is this reef explorer, is going to show up. Nice. It's fun. <laughs> well, how's life in uh? Oh uh, yeah, pretty good, you know. Um, Not bad. I had. I don't know if I should say this on the show. I had an interview today. I had to drive like Ooh. quite a while to go for it. I'm not even sure I really want the job, but I kind of I did well at the first time. You just want to look around? Yeah. So I went to it and we'll see see what happens. I don't know if jobs can do they get mad at you for looking around? Mm, no. It's dumb. But Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It probably just probably only helps me for them to think that. Yeah, um, actually, probably. You come in, you say, hey, I got an offer. I've been thinking about it. I might do it. They give you a counter offer. You know, it can happen. Yeah. I mean, I think but I guess, yeah. the thing is, it's like it's more money, but it's an hour's drive away. And also oh, every day. Well, I was thinking I'd be able to work from home most of the time, but they were saying yeah. the first time I spoke to them, like, oh, we kind of want you in the office more than you're not, meaning that like at least three days a week. At least three days a week. Which is quite bad, to be honest. And then also... It's an hour there and back, or an hour no, each an way? No, an hour, yeah, an hour each way. And that was with the traffic being, like, that was in the middle of the day today, at 9 yeah. o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning. It's probably going to be worse. Um, but the other thing is, like, I get my Tesla through work really cheaply because it's through this, like, yep. it's like salary sacrifice thing, which they mm -hmm. just don't have there. So if I wanted to keep my car or keep drive the same type of car, I'd probably end up paying You're a lot, pay a lot more for it, yeah. which would take away a lot of the extra money that I'd get from the new job so if they let you go in two days a week it might be worth it yeah that's but otherwise I, I think you'll probably fucking hate yourself if you have to go there to a two hour drive each day three times a week you'd probably just fucking hate that yeah. I would hate that at least. well I did I, I did an hour's train journey um, with 10 minutes walking either side for two years five days a week Jesus. and that was hell I like by the yeah. end of it, it <laughs> that fun. sounds like it would be hell it was fucking miserable it's like a really funny moment because you see the same guys on the train, you know, every day. Yep. You don't speak. You to probably them, see the same people, yeah. But you see them, and uh, like we were moving to Manchester. I was traveling from <laughs> Liverpool to Manchester. Yeah, so I was sitting next to one of these guys just randomly, and I'd seen him every day for two years. I'd never spoke to him. I just I took my headphones out. I was like, do you know what? I'm moving to Manchester this weekend. This is the last <laughs> time I'm gonna have to do the commute. And he was genuinely so happy for me, like on his face. He was like, he was like, oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it is. That's great. So, yeah, going back to that would be would be a lot. That's fucking awesome. Never talked to the guy for two years. And then yeah. he's just like, hey, I'm getting out. He's like, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. One of those things like, well, you know each other, but you've never spoken, but you're just seeing each other every day, you know? Yeah, he's like a part of your daily routine at that yeah. point. You'd be like, oh, where's like this guy that I've seen? Like, you know, I wonder what happened to him. I even had like this girl on the train that I'd sort of like... So I used to call her my train girlfriend. That was a bit of a laugh between me and Fra. And we'd sort of like glance at each other and like, you know, sort of smile and look away. And like one time yeah. after about a year of this, we were sat on, um, they have these things on the trains in England where it's like two seats facing two seats with a table in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we were both sat on one of these. And as she was getting off the train, her hand brushed mine. And she like giggled like a little schoolgirl <laughs> as she walked off the train. And uh, she must have got a new job or something because at some point I just never saw her again. But that was a good time. Train girlfriend. How funny. Yeah, I know. The things that you sort of imagine to am amuse yourself during the horrible commute. During the one hour each way commute. <laughs> Man, <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine a one hour each way commute. I think I used to drive like 20 or 30 minutes and that would kind of be a bitch, but it wasn't too bad because you can put on like a, you know, put on some music and get there. But an hour is a fucking long time. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's... I sort of I came to, come to terms with the, the hour, but the worst thing was mm -hmm. when the train was cancelled. Or, like, the trains Does were... Does that happen a lot in the UK? It maybe happened, like, once every couple of weeks. Once or twice, okay. Um, and then if that happened, you were waiting an hour for the next train, which is just really grim. Which would suck. Yeah. And then I assume your bosses would understand. No, well, yeah, they're not gonna... Well, uh, it's more coming home rather than in the morning. Oh, okay, home. okay, okay. Actually... Yeah. If the train was cancelled going again, I'd usually use it as an excuse to work from home. So I didn't mind that as much. Um, but it was you when I was pray every home. day. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please be cancelled. Yeah. All right. I'm uh, probably going to bounce, but uh, it's a good chat. All right. 
Have a good one. Good chat. See you, See you, see you later. Friday, probably. Yeah. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, Friday, yeah. Okay, cool. See you later.